First, should doctors be lecturing patients on climate change? It's time now for the Head to Head. Yeah, I thought this one might wind you up a little bit. So, health leaders have instructed doctors to use their trusted status to lecture patients about the dangers of climate change. Issuing new guidance, the Royal College of Physicians has told doctors to look out for people suffering so-called eco-distress, the term used to describe anxiety and depression caused by climate change. And just bear with me, right, because medics have also been instructed to work from home as much as possible to reduce their own carbon footprint. So, while we're on the topic of eco-distress, has anybody actually considered the very real dangers of climate alarmism? So, here's the co-founder of Extinction Rebellion, Roger Hallam, who had this cheery warning about the aftermath of a sustained climate change back in 2021. The other thing about social collapse is the complete loss of material security, or law and order, as you might say. A gang of young men come into your house, they take your girlfriend, they take your mother, they put her onto the table and they gang rape you, her in front of you. And then after that, they take a hot stick and they poke out your eyes and they blind you. Right. Uh, and look at the danger that those comments pose. So here's young Joss Stop Oil activist Eddie Whittingham speaking to me last year. I've decided that I won't be having children because I can't guarantee that there will be a habitable planet for them to grow up into. OK, is that a difficult decision for you? I mean, that's, that's quite a bold decision to make, isn't it? Well, I think it's the moral choice, given the circumstances that we're facing. I mean, that looks a little bit like eco-distress to me. So tonight I am asking, should doctors be lecturing patients on climate change? Let me know your thoughts, gbnews.com forward slash your say. Tweet me at gbnews while you're there. Go and vote in our poll. But going head-to-head -head on this, the founder of Same Day Doctor, Dr Lawrence Gerlis, and the doctor and Just Stop Oil spokesperson, Dr Kush Naker. Dr Kush, I will start with you on this. I mean, are you going to be lecturing patients on climate change then? Well, look, this isn't about lecturing patients. It's about recognising that burning oil, coal and gas is going to make more extreme weather events. Um, it's heating up the planet that we live on. Um, and that has huge impacts on people's health. And so, as a doctor, our responsibility is to talk to people about what poses a risk to their health um, so that they can be well informed about it and appropriately act to either prevent that from happening or adapt to it. But just to clarify, if, if I came in with an ear infection, are you going to start talking to me about climate change? Well, the, the point of this is not that we need to bring it up at every single consultation. It does set up frequently and repeatedly, but where it's appropriate and relevant. And so the sorts of examples that it gives is that if you're treating a patient with asthma um, and they are taking an inhaler that releases lots of uh, greenhouse gas emissions, then actually as part of that review of asthma, you can switch them to an inhaler that is much more environmentally friendly. Right. OK. Uh, Dr Lawrence, uh, I would like yeah. your views on this. I'm, I'm, when it comes to the kind of uh, eco-distress, I wonder if quite a lot of that is actually caused by people in Just Stop Oil. Well, if you look at the opening sentence of this toolkit, and I resent the name toolkit, incidentally, by the way, the Royal College of Physicians, which I'm proud and honoured to be a member of, is for hospital specialists and consultants. It's actually not for GPs. So this is aimed at a very senior level. Um, the opening sentence says, climate change is one of the biggest threats, the biggest threats to human health, and is projected, projected, to cause an, in excess of 250,000 deaths per year by 2050. Um, now, if that's not alarmist, we've seen hyperbole during the pandemic, and I, and I don't need to be talked down to. I'm, I'm a professional man. I don't need to be treated as a 16-year-old with this sort of document. I have enough to do with my patients. Of course, I, I'm not a climate denier, but I've got other things to worry about, uh, like can my patients get an appointment with the GP? Can they get an appointment at the hospital? Can they see a specialist? And let me pick up one thing where this advice is actually wrong and confusing. It's telling me to do more remote consultations. Now, I saw during the pandemic the damage that remote consultations can do in missing serious cancers. Also, my insurers, my indemnity insurers, tell me not to do remote con consultations because they're dangerous. So I'm confused. I think this is a naive, simplistic, 
patronising document, and I'm disappointed that my Royal College has had to tick the box to produce a document like this. That, that I'm not denying any issues with climate. I have no strong views. I'm right. not political. Oh, oh, all right. Uh, just... Kush, yeah, on, on that, because that's the other aspect of this, from what I understand it, which is in order to reduce doctors' carbon footprint themselves, they should do more uh, remote appointments. Uh, and I just wonder, you know, yeah, where are two, the patients in all of this? Two things. So, one, that um, projection that a quarter of a million people will die because of the effects of climate change uh, by the middle of this century, so that's just about 25 years away, um, wasn't a number plucked out of the air by the Royal College of Physicians. That was actually UK's health security agency um, that, that yeah, has not come up with that number. figure. It's a projection. It's a projection. And we've seen elsewhere this week what projected, you know, projected numbers then get, get taken as gospel and repeated. So I think it's, 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 look, if there's a real climate emergency, there's no need to open with a sentence like that. There's no need to, for hyperbole. Uh, and as I say, we saw it during the pandemic. Let me pick out another but thing. But we do right that here. with patient care all of the time. Yeah, we tell patients no, about don't. the risks that, that, that are posed to them from all sorts of things. It, it tells me at the end what, how I'm supposed to talk to my patients. An example of what I'm supposed to say. I'm supposed to say to my patients, when cars burn petrol, they emit toxic air pollutants that can be bad for your health. Well, I, you know... I, there's no way I'm going to say anything like that to my patients. I give advice. I treat everyone as an individual. This okay. this is a aimed at 16 year olds school leavers. This document. It's not right. something to be for senior. Well, well I'll let, doc, I'll let doctor, doctor Kush Doctor come come back to that then. So essentially, this is quite patronising and uh, ridiculous to paraphrase. I think yes. it would be a real shame to not give our patients the information that they need to actually act. Um, I appreciate that that example is not going to be appropriate to every patient that you speak to, but it's not suggesting that you use that language with every patient that you speak to. Um, it's simply saying that we need to discuss the effects of burning oil, gas and coal mm. that, will, that that will have with our patients um, and so that they can make choices. And actually, the vast majority of the time, it is the same choice that you need to make that is both environmentally friendly and good for your health. So if I have patients that spend a lot of time driving five miles to and from work, actually encouraging them to walk or cycle is better for their health, yeah. but it's also better for the environment. I, I, I get that. Yeah. I, I do just, I do just wonder though whether or not the NHS and some people who work in it might be better looking at their own performance as opposed to actually looking at the environment, right? So to take my example, very recently, I've had two scans, both of which were lost, numerous different cancelled appointments. Then when I did get to an appointment, the person hadn't read my notes and they read the wrong notes. I mean, this was going on for over a year, yeah. and in the end, I ended yeah. up going private. And, and Dr. Kush, that's not the climate's fault, is it? That is bang mm. average and substandard GPs. Absolutely. Yeah. And actually, this same document talks about us needing to reduce unnecessary waste. Um, yeah, but and, I don't need and... to be told that. I don't need to be told to, to reduce my prescribing. I do that anywhere. I don't need to be told in this document for the for climate to reduce prescribing. That's that's treats me like a, a newly qualified doctor. This is aimed at hospital consultants. It, it's really not necessary. And it actually, but... I think it actually damages the cause by being so patronising. It still happens in hospital where people will end up having chest x-rays done because it's not available on the computer system that we have uh, got in our hospital, even though they've had a chest x-ray done recently somewhere else. So patients do go through unnecessary extra right. tests. Yeah, and this right. is talking Absolutely. about, let's, let's just be more rational and actually put the patient first, put their care first, right. and at the same time help protect the environment. Uh, all, all right, both of you, thank you very, very much. It was a good head-to-head, -head, that much appreciated. Um, so we do have a, a right of reply here, I believe, from Professor Ramesh Arasaradam, who is the Royal College of Physicians spokesperson. said, uh, the need to act has never been more urgent, and we hope that our green physician toolkit will support the physician community with small steps that can make a difference. It can, of course, be challenging to prioritise sustainability at a time where there is a very high demand for clinical care. But we have to keep in mind that reducing climate change and its health impact is part of reduced pressure on the NHS in the long term. So, look, who do you agree with on that? Should doctors be lecturing patients on climate change? Maureen says they're doctors, not scientists. Uh, OK. Uh, the NHS backlog is uh, already so bad. Uh, when will they get their priorities right? Cassandra says, first, the NHS jumps on the transgender bandwagon and now they've got the Save the Planet nonsense. How about doctors do the job that they are paid to do? Julie says, there's nothing wrong with doctors 
doctors advising patients about how to keep themselves safe during a heat wave or discussing issues that are causing depression. Well, look, 2% of you apparently think that doctors should be talking to us about climate change. 98% of you said they should not. But coming up, as the devolved Welsh government is plunged into chaos by